back to Aqua Kids. Whew, I needed that break. I think we all did. <laughs> Aqua Kids honors Aqua Heroes, people working hard to keep the planet green and blue. Today's Aqua Hero has had an amazing career of underwater exploration, scientific and technological research, as well as aquatic conservation and preservation. Sylvia Earle has led more than 400 underwater expeditions around the world and has spent over 7,000 hours underwater while doing her research. That's close to an entire year under the sea. She has received over 100 national and international honors and was awarded the 2009 TED Prize for her proposal to establish a global network of protected marine areas. In addition, Sylvia Earle is the author of more than 125 publications on marine science and technology, as well as five children's books. Sylvia Earle is definitely giving Aquaman a run for his money as the world's greatest underwater superhero. Hands down, one of the most exciting exhibits found here at Florida Oceanographic is one called Gamefish Lagoon. They actually have over 35 different species of fish in here, and they have some pretty big nurse sharks. So we're going to get the opportunity to feed. All right, let's do it. All right, All right so what we're going to do is we're going to feed our lagoon right now. Uh, we have a mixture of uh, different fish, shrimp, and squid. So if you guys start uh, throwing out to each side, we'll see what uh, species come up, and I'll help you identify them. How many individuals and how, what are the species of fish living in this lagoon? Uh, there's approximately 300 to 350 individuals in our game fish lagoon right now. Uh, we have the three species of rays, our nurse sharks, uh, but we also have different game species such as uh, tarpon, snook, uh, jacks, uh, three types of snapper. Um, we also have permit, pompano, many of the local uh, species that you would find or that our anglers would pursue. Very cool, and it's a huge lagoon. It is a huge lagoon. Uh, you'll also see some reef dwelling fish, such as uh, those yellow ones, which are the uh, pork fish. And uh, we also have some blue tangs uh, right above the reef balls. Now those reef balls are uh, concrete structures that uh, they put around different local waterways to provide habitat for fish and other uh, marine creatures. Nice. So what's the purpose of this whole lagoon? What's your goal for having it here as a facility? Uh, um, the purpose of the lagoon is to showcase many of the species uh, that you would find in our local waters uh, because unless you're a fisherman you might not see any of these fish or even as fishermen you might not uh, know what they look like up close unless you've caught them. But also to encourage stewardship uh, of our local um, waterways because by protecting the fish uh, we're protecting their habitats vice versa and uh, getting people to know these animals such as at the touch tanks or getting to see them up close uh, they're more apt to be personal stewards of their environment by getting the personal experience here uh, to experience their uh, what's around us. Well, now that the fish are fed, especially the big sharks are fed and they're pretty docile now, we're actually going to get the rare opportunity to put the kids in the water and experience these animals up close, so we're really excited. So Roger, we're out back of the Game Fish Lagoon and the kids get the rare opportunity to actually enter the Game Fish Lagoon. What are some things they need to keep in mind while they're snorkeling? Stay away from our rays. Everything else is fair game. They can touch anything they want. They're okay. we got plenty of fish for them to look at. As I entered the water, I was completely amazed at the clarity of the water. You could see so many fish. I made sure to keep my hands near my chest area in order to become a more predictable snorkeler and to ensure that I did not disrupt any wildlife. And I guess it worked. Look how close this nurse shark came to me. I took a look at the snook and saw the beauty in its simply colored scales. When I looked around, I saw lots of animals, including a whopping 10-pound lobster. What a find this animal would be if caught by a fisherman, but I will never reveal my secret spot. The porkfish had the same colorings as a bloomed sunflower. I do have to say, I watched out for those stingrays, because today was not the day to be messing with an animal that could potentially stab me if it felt threatened. At one point, though, I felt curious and decided to follow the animal that I somewhat feared and was stunned by the cow nose's elegance and beauty as it flew through the water. It barely noticed me as it swam by. The jacks looked like they were pancakes on a breakfast menu. The blue tang was particularly eye-catching with its royal blue color. I came across some sergeant majors that looked like hovering bumblebees in the water with its black stripes and yellow colorings. 
I was stunned by the way so many animals could coexist in the same lagoon. Now if only people could follow the animals' lead in coexisting together, the world would be a better place. That's that crazy. Was awesome. I know, those stingers are Whoa. pretty cool looking. What are you doing? I'm getting ready for the next segment. You hear us? Be perfect. Kabam! <laughs>